And look what I found. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hey everyone, it's George the Antique Nomad, and look what I found. It's a Duncan and Miller glass swan. It's the large one. They call this the Pall Mall line. And you do see these. It's not that they're wildly unusual to find, but it's half of $9. It's unusual to find them at that price. So I'm going to take this guy. I am in a half off booth at Sturgis Antique Mall in Kentucky. And of course, I'm an antique dealer and reseller as well as an appraiser and conductor of estate sales. So I am looking for merchandise to take with me west of my shows. And I wanted to go around with you. This is part of a series of short format videos where I go to a place that I've been before. This is where I filmed my second YouTube video ever, way back when, and we take a look around, see what's new and fresh, and also in this case, what is going away, because they have a bunch of new stock coming in, so this space is all half off. And I was talking about how to shop in a half off space when you're in a hurry. Well, I look for things that I recognize, first of all. Uh, this piece is only $5, and that appears to be a ground bottom, but I believe that is Viking. Uh, and so I look for things that I think are interesting or that I think would be a, something I would look at if I was a collector, and then I see if the price is right at half off. This is Ellie Smith. It's the Goose Girl bookend, and she's, again, she's $5. That's a pretty hard price to beat. This piece here... I'm curious about the era on this. I'm gonna put this back for a minute while we look here. This one is a very pretty satin glass dresser box and it's only going to be half of $15. And that seems like a really good deal as well. So since that's all more than I think I can carry right now, I'm going to leave the half off booth and take you around to some other places. My cameraman thinks I'm going to let that drop, but I promise I'm not. And so we'll take you around and show you some other parts of this mall because it really is cool. And they do have a lot of really great stuff. Uh, these lamps here are Corday, and they have them priced at 65 for a pair, which is a really good deal. Corday was made using real lace, and they dip it in porcelain. And the problem with Corday is sometimes you see losses, like right there. So you have to look it over carefully. But it's an area of collecting that those pieces used to bring a lot of money, and they haven't for a while because the pink and gray tones that they represent and the pastels have been out of style. But now we're seeing color trends go back to that. Now, if you're a reseller, that's something to look for. Look for things that go back in the past, see, you know, the last time everybody painted their walls gray, what did they accent with? And look for things like that. And in a few years, you're going to be sitting on a lot of stuff people want. Uh, speaking of interesting things, let's take a look at this set here. I just noticed it out of the corner of my eye. This is made in England, but it's actually called the Wisconsin pattern because those little scenes in it were supposed to, I think, represent maybe that's Wisconsin Dells and they've got the boats and they've got various little scenes in each one of these pieces. Uh, that is a very hard set to find. It's going to date to the late 1800s. We see this aesthetic period, as they called it, 1870s and 80s transfer wear coming out of England. And this is a very complete set. They're asking $3,500 for it. Now, I'm not saying that that's necessarily a price you or I could get for that, but what it points out to me is that pieces like that are interesting to collectors. So if I see one in a sale and it seems like it has an interesting design, I'm going to take a look at that because especially serving pieces could sell for good money. You notice some holes here. This is because they are starting to unload several uh, they said they have two containers full of merchandise in the back, and I love this bike back here. You can just barely see it, but it's a, it's a girl's bike, but it, they said 1930s, and I think that's right because it's got that slip gear and that interesting Art Deco sort of wing shape for the chain guard on it. So that's an interesting piece, and it is, it's got a name. Let's see, oh, it's a Hiawatha bike. And even the uh, little badges on here, these little bike badges, these are worth $30 and $40 a piece just by themselves. So this might be worth more for parts than the price that they have on it. 
a lot of pretty lamps we're walking under here on our way through this kitchen space. And let's see what else we can, go. oh, this is kind of fun here. This is a popcorn popper, believe it or not. Old appliances that still work actually have their adherence, and this one looks like it was in the back of the cupboard and never used. It even has its little moles inside. Then back in here we get into uh, an area that it's worth taking a moment to talk about. But first, let me say uh, thank you very much for watching. Please do uh, like and comment about this video. It lets YouTube know that there's interest and it lets us know the type of content that you'd like to see more of. There's a whole bunch of National Geographics in here. And the reason I'm pointing these out is because there are basements full of these across America. This is what they looked like in the old days before they actually put pictures on the front. And they're really interesting. There's some great articles. There's some good old advertising. Here's the heart-to-heart -heart long distance for the Bell Company trying to convince you to blow 10 or $20 on a cross-country call. It's funny how we do all of this stuff for, you know, $100 a month and you can call anywhere you want. Uh, but it was a different era, and they've got a bunch more over here. Now, the thing with National Geographics is so many people kept them. It was the type of magazine you held on to that they're honestly not very valuable. So it's unusual to see a big collection like this in a place because at the prices they sell for, there, there just isn't a lot of money in them generally. So uh, I wanted to point those out. Sometimes I like to point out things that you're going to see that maybe you want to pass on by, and that might be an example of that. Now here we're getting back into some of the area where they have architectural pieces like doors and things. They actually have stuff all around the outside of this store as well. And for people restoring old homes, that can be a pretty great thing. Here's a cog table. I hadn't noticed this. That's kind of fun. It's a big old wooden gear turned into a coffee table. Very 1970s look. And that's $175. And if you like that industrial stuff, well, that might be for you. It's just something I, I always think of the, the TV show Taxi and the kind of stuff that uh, Jim would have on that show. Now, this space is all Christmas. This space has no Christmas that I consider vintage enough for my customers. And, you know, Christmas is in the eye of the beholder. There's lots of people who like that and uh, think it's neat and like to decorate with it. But as far as I go, if it's not 70s or earlier, it really just looks like new stuff to me, honestly. Here we have a very nice flow blue washstand pitcher. And this is where I like the orange decoration on it. You'll see the mark on the bottom is this company in Fenton, Fenton being a town in England, no relationship to the Fenton Glass Company whatsoever. Peony is the pattern, and with the bright orange colors, you can figure this is going to date to about 1910. There was a time every home had these because you didn't have indoor plumbing, and it's just a very pretty set. The prices are very reasonable compared to what they used to be on those. Nice little perfume bottles here. That's the Liz Taylor commercial bottle. That's why you see them all over the place. I think this is Black Diamonds or one of those uh, fragrances. This space has something that is definitely something we see in this part of the country that is very popular, and that is quilts. We are near Paducah, Kentucky, where the National Quilt Museum is, and because of that, there are people who come twice a year to conventions there from all over the world, and they are very interested in textiles. So you see a lot of dealers here looking for these things because they know they'll sell. This one's 175, it's a Dutch girl applique. This looks like something probably from the 19, I'd say 40s, 50s probably because of the turquoise. You always date a quilt by the last piece of fabric put in it. So if you repair an old quilt, get old fabric or else you made it brand new. Here we've got this avocado color. This is going to be 1950s as well with the pinwheels. And this one is priced 
at 175 as well. Size matters as far as the pricing on these. Uh, the pattern matters as well. And then age, if you get back into where they had indigo dyes or the red dyes that they had to use berries and things to make that aren't color fast, if they're in good condition, they can be really valuable uh, because it's very hard to recreate those now. Now this space has a bunch of yellow green Vaseline that's newer. And I'm gonna show you a little bit about how you tell the newer. They want 28 for this bowl. It's perfectly fine price, but it's greasy as can be. It feels just greasy like a piece of bacon. And that is a factor that comes into newer glass because of how they anneal it. Here's another piece, and you can see it just, again, there's no wear on the bottom at all. If this was a hundred and some years old, you would expect to see it having been used. So those are $10 each. And, you know, it's perfectly fine to collect it because it glows and it's cool looking. Just don't be fooled into thinking you're getting a Victorian piece that's actually worth $100. And while we walk down here under some very pretty chandeliers, I wanted to mention that uh, I do assist people with appraisal work. If you go to the antiquenomad.com and hit the appraisal button, you can find out more about that. And I may be able to help you suss out information about something that you have been wondering about in your home. All right, let's see in here. This little set here is Cambridge Chromecraft, Cambridge Glass out of Ohio made the liners and then Farberware made the chrome. This is very popular in the 1930s. These are only $12.99 for the pair. I think the value on these retail really should be more like 20 to 25. So um, those are priced pretty reasonably for what they are. Across the aisle here, we have this pattern here, which is something that you will see quite a bit. These are Old English castles. And this was actually very popular in Canada and in the United States as well. I see it a surprising amount considering that the focus was on England, but Johnson Brothers sold a lot of dinnerware here in the United States. Several of their patterns were carried by a lot of the big department stores. So Old Britain castles is this pattern. And it looks to me like they have $5.95 on this set. Again, some of these red transfer wear patterns still sell well because there's still a group of people who really enjoy them. Now I have to say, this might be more my beauty. <laughs> I really get a kick out of Dayglow advertising panels from the 1950s and 60s. This one obviously came out of a drapery store. And this one is talking about fine dry cleaning. It might be fun in a vintage fashion store. These are priced at 35 a piece. I just enjoy all of this old advertising stuff. And the bright day glow colors definitely remind me of an era in which I was very, very young. Now, these are cool. These, I believe, are treasure craft. And I haven't had this set before. It's the lighter and the pack of cigarettes. They did so much cool whimsy stuff back in the original era. I think that I might have to have those. They are $12. The theme sets actually go higher. I've seen prices as high as 35 and 40 lately on some of the themes. And then we have this guy, Thumper. This is a Soki for the bathtub. I was a little too little for these to be much of a thing by the time I came along, and I always felt a little jealous because I'd see the old bottles in people's houses that were just sort of sitting there and think, oh, those look fun. I like the idea of ripping Elmer Fudd's head off and pouring shampoo on me. <laughs> okay, let's see here. I guess I was a weird kid. Um, oh, here's a very pretty piece here. This may be Haywood Wakefield production. Let's take a look and see if they know. Haywood Wakefield was known for wicker and they did Victorian baby carriages like this. And the price on this is $199. And you think, wow, this is from 1900 or earlier and it's so neat and it's so big and why wouldn't it be more money? It's got the parasol and everything. The problem is, is you need a big space to display them. And unless you're gonna sit a little kid in it for pictures or something, people don't really have a good idea about how to use these pieces now. And that's the reason that they don't sell for more money. I think we might take a look over here and find a, what was I looking for? Oh yes, um, this interesting display here. Now this stuff is not for sale and usually when I go in an antique store and I see stuff not for sale, it makes me kind of cross. 
But this is an exception because this is all sorts of historic memorabilia from this town. And in effect, this is turned into the museum. And it's great because it's open seven days a week and people can come and see all this neat old stuff that came from here. You see the race car there. They actually have Little Sturgis, which is a big bike rally coming up in a few weeks here at the uh, third week of July, I believe. But it's got the old bank a plate from the old bank, one of those advertising plates that usually would sell for about 15 to twenty dollars except if you're in the town that it's from then suddenly it's maybe thirty dollars so one thing to know about local memorabilia is if you can find stuff from the area you live or where you sell bring it back there and that's where it'll sell again in the meantime i'm george the antique nomad i hope you've had fun going through these quick little deals with me where we take a little trip through a place we've been before and talk about what's new and what's different and try to give you some interesting tips and hints and show you pretty things and talk about what they sell for in a retail environment in the antique and vintage business. Check out the social media and links in the description and we'll see you again soon. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below Click the bell to be notified when new videos upload. Leave a comment below and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!